basically we're going to the other way. We're going to show photos I took in China over the years. I'm from Philadelphia. But I worked in China for more than 20 years as a biochemical engineer with the Chinese pharmaceutical industry. I went back and forth about 136 times. And my first trip was in 1976 when Chairman Mao was still alive. It was a very close country then. Not easy to get in. And then uh, he died later that year. Then Xiaoping took over and completely different direction. Mao had closed the country to the and wanted everyone to be under complete control of the party. Then realized that China would fall further and further behind with this uh, strategy. <laughs> so he started to open the country to foreign uh, contact, <coughs> foreign cooperation, foreign investment. And uh, how I got to China, I went to graduate school in England, Imperial College. <laughs> It's one of the better schools in the world. And my professor was Ernst Chain, who won the Nobel Prize in 1945 for penicillin discovery. I was in for limited very little. <laughs> and to develop this process to produce antibiotics, Ernst Chain did that. And he had been to China in the 50, 1950s, helping them set up their first penicillin plant. So I was the only American on campus at that time. So he said, would you like to work in China? How could that happen? <laughs> he had the contacts. So over time, I was invited. Uh, the expertise I had was of interest. So I helped them to a lot of technology transfer and making different antibiotics and other anti-cancer drugs. Uh, now, in the United States does not produce any bulk antibiotics. We're all dependent on importing from China and India, which is a mistake, but that's yes. beside the point. So what I want to mention before I start the, the presentation uh, all of the pictures were taken as color slides, not di digital photography. All the slides or the photos that we'll show you tonight were taken 1976 to 89, and a few of uh, 1999, one, which I'll point out. And China looks completely different today. So all the pictures were taken in the slides in the pre digital era. Two years ago, I had them transferred from slide carousels to a photo CD, and they made a mistake. They um, didn't have the right order. So I'm going to be jumping around from place A to place B to place C, and I apologize. Mm -hmm. That's my fault. Don't assume. The, now the presentation. We are now at the Chinese frontier between Hong Kong and China. The border town at that time was Shenzhen, which was a, a free fire zone. Nobody, nobody could live there. Now it's bigger than Hong Kong. It's completely changed. So this is the, um, the frontier where we get out of the train and cross. And this is a border guard. There's a bicycle from the cars in. And some political slogan, uh, probably uh, beat the imperialists. <laughs> They're very militant in those days. Uh, how do I change? Mouse there. Just click on the. On this okay, side there. okay. This was actually on the train going into uh, into Chinese territory from the border crossing to Guangzhou. Guangzhou would be the biggest city in southern China. Uh, now it's a, a giant metropolis. And here you see rice, uh, right, right, rice paddy culture. More work, work in the fields. This is before we got to uh, Guangzhou. This would be in April of 1976. Whose fields would they be? Whose fields would they be? Oh, government. The government. government. There were no, 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 uh, no private land ownership, e even today. Basically, the um, People's Commune rents the fields from the government. They pay a tax, in, at that time, a tax in kind in terms of produce, in this case, it was rice. Left button. What? Left button. Oh, left button. Okay. Okay. You have to get it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. This is on the road to Guangzhou, the train trip, the trip to Guangzhou. This is a rural construction. And as I uh, was told, they're building a, a water project, and you see cisterns, 
uh, jugs, but um, and basically they were getting water from this uh, project. They take it to the fields. It wasn't pipe water. They were taking it from the jugs and so forth. This is 1976. I'm sure this can change this. Yes? I was just thinking how heavy it would be. Yes, they are. <laughs> so everybody's very thin. <laughs> This is in Guangzhou, uh, right across from the hotel. There's only one hotel foreigners could stay in at the time. Only one hotel in the whole city at that time. Now there are dozens. And here's this poster you can see from the, you know, the size. It's you know, larger than life. And here's a Revolutionary Guard with the sayings of Chairman Mao in his uh, left hand, and uh, basically. Uh, I think the Chinese letters are basically struggle against uh, uh, capitalism and imperialism. It's very uh, stimulating. And I was walking on the street with a, a guy, China, I mean, Chinese guy, of course. And uh, yeah, I said, what does the uh, sign say? And she said, defeat all the capitalists and imperialists and their running dogs. And then she said to me, you're an American, you are a running dog. <laughs> <laughs> With a smile. <laughs> Sir? Huh? Yes? What is the kiosk there on the page? Tra uh, policeman, a tra traffic policeman. Re regulating traffic. Almost everything was bicycle at that time, hardly any cars at all. <laughs> and this is another, you know, larger than life poster. You know, the new uh, socialism will um, succeed, something like that. Bicycles. Uh, you will never see these photos anywhere. I mean, not photos. You will never see these posters anywhere in China today. They, they are definitely a thing of the past. This is the Pearl River. It's like the Delaware. It runs through uh, Guangzhou. Uh, not as busy, perhaps, at that time. And a lot of the, the small crafts were carrying small cargo or human muscle. You know, I saw at that time, not today, but at that time, very few motorized boats of any kind. Here's another boat, and here you have the people in the back um, stealing it. Small, small cargo up and down the river. And here we have in Guangzhou, um, very few at that time, very few trucks and cars. Here's somebody really peddling this um, whatever some agricultural product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is uh, in, in, in New Guangzhou. Here are people washing their clothing on the street. Of course, you didn't have um, public laundries then, laundromats. <laughs> uh, this is like late April, early May, so it's very warm, very warm now. Uh, here is a uh, city street in New Guangzhou, uh, a, bike, a bicycle park, shall we say, you know, public bike park. And the slogan on the, uh, in the Chinese characters is a revolutionary slogan, struggle, or something like that. I forget, but something militant, shall we say. Polite, but militant. Lots of bikes. Now, I'm in the hotel, and I went to the roof to look down. Around there were all the uh, traditional housing. Uh, tile roofs. Here you can see people. Uh, some activities outside. Here they're hanging their laundry out here. And, uh, that's all. I, I, I'm told today you cannot see any of this. It's all been replaced by more uh, modern uh, housing. But this is more traditional architecture. Yeah, here's a close up of what we saw in the previous picture. The young lady is hanging her laundry out on poles. Uh, spaces at a premium, of course. Tile roofs. Now, this is May Day, a big, big political holiday, International Worker Solidarity Day. And we're in a central park for a number of performances. And as a foreign guest, I'm being guided through, and everybody wants to see me. They hadn't seen many foreigners before. At <laughs> that time, I had a fuller beard, so this was really a curiosity. It's a policeman with his bullhorn, and people step back. And here we have a uh, traditional lion dance. This is May Day at 
you know, mixing up the socialist message on the large characters with the traditional lion dance, the drum beating the drums. Close up of the lions. And in the park, this is one of the pavilions. You know, it's, uh, a lot of people were out that day. The young lady is pouring tea from thermoses. Wherever you go to China, you'll see a thermos for hot water. It saves energy. Some uh, um, uh, visitors at the park. The red uh, handkerchief, or kerchief, which is called a tie. That's a, he's a young pioneer. This would be a communist party, a youth organization. Pioneers, red tie. Now there's a concert, and this is a choir singing revolutionary songs. And this is the foreign audience that we're invited to hear these uh, revolutionary songs. And this particular act, this is a shepherd from Tibet. He's saying, I remember they were telling me he's how happy he is that the party is guiding him. Another act in that in this at the park, uh, three young uh, peasant women. You know, we all work together, we'll succeed. Not bad. Now this is another park in Guangzhou, and another um, event. Revolutionary slogans. Well, let's see what we have. Yeah, here is a group of young pioneers. Revolutionary pioneers being sworn in to swear in ceremony. And I had to ask each time, could I take a picture, you know? Then they'd have a discussion, yes, you may take that picture. <laughs> this is some of the posters in the park. This is Chairman Mao. This is um, who shall she? Joe and Lai on the left, who just died about a month, two months before, both the left star staring. And these are revolutionary, you know, the peasants, the workers, the um, all a collective message, you know, that the revolution will make us succeed. And um, we'll not make any judgments. And here we have a concert. These were the red, infamous Red Guards, they had an orchestra. Singing revolutionary songs, playing revolutionary music. And the uh, crowd sing. This is at the Guangzhou Zoo. This is a, uh, a panda, giant panda. I don't know if he's a party member. But, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. They, did they let you walk around un, unaccompanied, or did you always have to have a hand? Well, I'll put it this way. I don't speak Chinese, even today. It's a tonal language, and I cannot hear the tones. I can't read the, the signs. So it's my benefit that somebody, otherwise I'd be in the middle of nowhere. But I would say, I want to see this, you know. And uh, I never was re refused. Uh, I was not in a tour group, I was by myself. So at that time, there were no tour groups. <laughs> not, not at all. Yes. And then this is a, they had a concert one night, some revolutionary performances. This is a revolutionary opera, revolutionary theme. Another one, the shipbuilders of Shanghai. Uh, the colors are not as sharp as they look like them. And she's doing a flying leap. These are all welders. They actually had welding on stage, if I remember. <laughs> Some metal plates. Yeah. This is another performance. These were uh, herdsmen from a border region near uh, Soviet Union at the time. The relations with the Soviet Union were very, very bad at the time, you know. So then they showed us a school, and these are the children greeting us. And they're getting a performance, dressing up as the different national minorities. The uh, there are many different national minorities inside China. You have Muslims in the north, in the northwest. The Uyghur, they're called Uyghurs. And these, these are where the Hungarian people came from, from Xinjiang. And Uyghur is the old word for Hungarian. Uh, you have 
many different different uh, minority groups. And this is a temple. This is a city called Foshan, uh, not near Guangzhou. This is algae, by the way. <laughs> algae covered pond. It's a very. Uh, it hadn't been commercialized yet, but it's an old temple, and it's really quite fascinating. Tile roofs, not lion, algae. <laughs> This is a, a rear view of the lion. Yeah. Impressive. <laughs> now, I'm told, people have been there recently, it's just it's like Disneyland, you know, full of uh, commercial stalls, lots and lots of people. It's a different atmosphere. Another view within the central temple of the lion. The lion is always the symbol of imperial power in China. Stylized lion. And and the, the roof, you know, of the temple of the around these little glass. This is a close-up of some of the uh, images. Quite explicit. And what is the material? Is it stone? Um, I would presume semi, well, stone. Various stone painted. Uh, some, some items could have been uh, semi-precious. Uh, yeah. I forgot to ask that question a long ago. <laughs> How old do you think that is? Oh, at least 1,500 years old, at least. Wow. At least. Now, this is a workshop near the temple where they're making figurines. And here, there's a, there are molds of the plaster um, figurines. And the ladies are painting them, each one by hand. Here's a detail. She's painting uh, this figurine, probably for export. Oh, do I stick that And this is a elephant tusk card. I'm not sure the elephant misses it, but um, the figures are re so revolutionary figures. Horsemen, you know, they're, it's, it's a revolutionary scene, probably from the 1920s, 1930s. And in southern China, there are lots of um, delta, which had delta, you know, um, estuaries. Um, and a lot of uh, transport is done by narrow or small boats along these um, can canals, I think might be the better word. Yeah. One, I wouldn't drink from that, but that's another story. Now, this was my second trip in October of 76. They just had a, a counter coup. Mao had died the month before, Chairman Mao. He might have been dead for a year for all we know, but they didn't announce it. <laughs> you never know, really. And um, one group, the one who had, you know, this um, anarchistic period, the Cultural Revolution, they were going to take over completely, and basically the military overthrew them. And they labeled the uh, these. Um, enemies of the people of the Gang of Four, four principal people. So somebody would say, well, do, do people know what happened? Look, these are posters all over the city. <laughs> here are your enemies. So here you have the, the army, the worker, and the peasants smashing the Gang of Four. We have four heads here. And they're all portrayed like as a snake. Uh, here people, oh, it's very interesting, as it happened. Close up on another little watches the, the, the posters, you know. Yeah, here's a uh, now they actually translated it for our <laughs> benefit. Indignantly denounced the towering crimes of the anti party clique of Wang Hong Wen, Ching Chen Chao, Chang Ching, and Yao Wen Yun to usurp party and state power. And these are these four people, and the fist of the party is crushing them. Very, very vivid, you know. No ambiguity there, yes? When the, when the regime was changed, was it tougher for you to get in and out of the country at all? Well, there were so few foreigners in the first place, and we had exit permits, so that, 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 that was uh, not a problem. This happened while I was there, but um, it's not like the numbers that were visiting China today. There were really very, very few foreigners at the time. And I want to emphasize also, he needs an invitation to yeah, get in. Yeah, you couldn't just walk in. Yeah, you had to have a state corporation or state agency to, to get in. invite you and, um, and 
and he needs exit visa to get out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And here's another um, smash the guy of four. These are the four people. One is portrayed as pest, snake, um, insect, a rat, a fly. <laughs> 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 Nobody punches there. <laughs> yeah. And here is a uh, market town in um, southern China near Guangzhou, and everything is carried by bicycle. And then, at those times, you'll see no cars at all. The bicycle was used as a truck, essentially, you know, pulled with uh, baskets of produce. And uh, I drew a lot of attention. Not, not many beers in China, or what for that matter, at that time. And this is the market. Uh, some vegetables. Market. Market. <laughs> Now, uh, this is outside of Bongo, it's a rice field, they're planting rice in the rice paddy. Close up. It's all done by hand. Mostly women? No, men and women in the field. But this particular mm -hmm. shot, you know, there were men and women in the field, as I recall. Uh, now here we are. John Deere tractor, <laughs> <laughs> very reliable, and uh, there's another one over there, and uh, you can see its reflection in the paddy, and I would assume it's still pretty much the same way today. I don't believe, from what I understand, the, uh, the agricultural sector has been that mechanized, because it would create a lot of unemployment, you know, keep people busy, keep people employed. So now, but in the cities, it's a different story. Industry is very mechanized now. It's a different, a different situation. But this is uh, May 1976. Another, there's a water buffalo. It's like the, uh, the GMC of the, of the time. <laughs> I believe they got three crops of rice in southern China, three crops of rice a year. Now, we're in Beijing. This is 1979. Deng Xiaoping has been in power for maybe two years. The country is really changing for the better, I might on that. So here was a, another propaganda poster, very different from before, and basically the same you have to be open to the world, you know. Before, it was the soldiers, the peasants, and the uh, workers that were supreme. Now we have uh, uh, educated you know, scholar, scholars and skilled workers. It's very, very different looking at the value of science. So the, the message to the people is that had changed. Under Mao, universities have been closed for 10 years. You know, it was a disaster. Uh, here we are in Beijing. This is um, the outer gate to the Tiananmen. Uh, there are three, three gates, or guard towers, if I recall. And this was in February 79. People were still dressed in you know, worker clothing. And it's a revolutionary saying, and I don't really know what it says, but some revolutionary thing. You don't have that anymore. And this is the, at Tiananmen. There's some vi visitors, and this will take you from the city. Revolutionary slogan, slogan, slogan. Lots of slogans in those days. Here we are in the middle of Tiananmen. This is the uh, a monument to the revolution, and it's really it's not probably the biggest square. I mean, it makes St. Peter's and Vatican look small. <laughs> Something bigger than City Hall courtyard in Philadelphia. <laughs> I didn't see any pigeons. In. Now, the Peking Hotel, where I stayed, this is in February 79, it's right by Tiananmen. This is the entrance to the Forbidden City. And that's like Broad Street. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at a room, not my room, a common room, overlooking Tiananmen. And, and, and this now, we're get, you, once you go through here, you're in the Forbidden City. That was built around 1400, I think, the Ming Dynasty. So. Been restored. It's quite impressive. <clears throat> Forbidden meant only the emperor and his 
staff and household could, could live there and be there. Yeah, that's the main entrance to Tiananmen, where you, once you go through there, you're in the Forbidden City. Bicycles then, a lot of people dressed salt soldiers in the street, people you know, dressed in tunics, green, black, or gray, or blue. I don't dress like that anymore. And this is the symbol of Tiananmen, this um, obelisk. Means obelisk in front, and uh, this is a Sunday, if I recall. People, common people, were visiting. Now we're going inside. You know, we pass through the first gate. This picture is still there. Everybody's dressed warmly because it's quite cold in the wintertime in Beijing. And all the uh, winds from Mongolia come 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 in with the mountains. It's surrounded by mountains. Now I'm at, on that. Previous slide where you had this uh, gate, you can go up there. I'm up there now, looking down at Tiananmen across. You know. Now the traffic, I'm told, is much much greater than than before. And this is a uh, revolutionary sign uh, in, in, in in the area. And their signs are quite uh, expressive. <laughs> So yeah, it was winter time. You could see uh, it doesn't snow very often in Beijing, but it did that that month. And this is the central hall of the Forbidden City. It's like the, uh, you see the tower, statue of a uh, bronze lion, Chinese lion. Snow. You see visitors now. You, here you see very few visitors at that time. Now it's just packed with people. <laughs> We're going through the Forbidden City you know, to the next main hall. And this is a, there are a lot of pavilions in the Forbidden City, very uh, different, you know, a lot of variety. And this is one, and here are some people coming out. They're really dressed warmly because the winter is cold. This is that same pavilion, a lot of view. At that time, you could not have central heating south of the Yangtze River, only north. Shanghai is the Yangtze River, so it's still cold, and you know you need very, very cold inside buildings. You know, uh, I think that's changed. This is in the Forbidden City. This is one of those lions I mentioned. It's not gold. It's probably a copper. You know, polishing very nicely. Or the world out of the emperor of the world. Um, it's closing the gate. It's one of the gates we went through. Um, if I could show this as a slide, which I cannot tonight, it would be much, much sh sh sharper, you know, in terms of the colors and, and the contrast. And this is the famous wall of the nine dragons. This was 1400, 1425, something in the, in the time frame. And there are nine dragons. Each one has a different uh, significance, which I don't really recall. And here's a family visiting. Uh, here's a close-up of the, one, one, one of the dragons, symbol of the emperor. Is that tile work? Yes, yes, that's all tile. Yeah. You won't find it Walmart. <laughs> And here we have, um, this is really the center of the Forbidden City. It's all this... Uh, Bricks. Cobblestone? Cobblestone, right, cobblestone. People are dressed, that are, this is how people, most people dress the same way, essentially, in military tunics before. <coughs> it's really a vast expanse. And here we are, uh, one of the... That building that we came from, looking down on part of Tiananmen, these are two soldiers having a, uh, having a, having a look. Uh, similarly, soldiers and their families. And uh, a lot of soldiers are not necessarily combat soldiers, but civil servants, you know, uh, military, ran a lot of factories. Some of the pharmaceutical factories I worked with were run by the military, you know, great enterprising. They made bicycles, they made shoes. Mm -hmm. you know, going up, it's a young little girl. And, uh, 
there's a, a huge um, cystic um, like a pot, like a, a cauldron. cauldron, that's the cauldron, really big. So one of them went inside, and <laughs> I took a picture. <laughs> But there's, he wasn't boiled, there was no water, it was just, uh, <laughs> these are soldiers, you know. Okay, this is from the hotel window overlooking the Forbidden City. Here is some housing, Forbidden City is beyond, beyond that, uh, you know, the wall there. Some of the pavilions, some industrial housing back there in the back, and at the very back it's, in the slide, it shows more, the color contrast is better. It shows the mountains, the Beijing is surrounded by mountains. Yeah, here's a better view. The Forbidden City is surrounded by a wall. I'm sure all this housing has been, has been demolished since, since, you know, for replaced by something different. The mountains in the back. This is another park in Beijing. It's a Tibetan pagoda. And here is the, uh, the wall of Rin City. If people got any haircut, down at the bottom. There it comes up. Okay. <laughs> uh, another big um, tourist attraction, visitor attraction in Beijing is the Summer Palace. And this is where the uh, Emperor. Summer, yeah. And there's a lake, an artificial lake, a lot of moon bridges. It's really quite beautiful. This was taken in the wintertime. This is, what would you call this? A, um, a governor? No. Um, a structure. <laughs> <laughs> a typical oriental structure. Um, you see them in China, Korea, and Japan as well. And this is by the uh, West. Called up the West Lake of the Summer Palace. It's really quite impressive. We'll get to the end of part one here. Okay. On to part two. Oh, okay, that's okay, Jim. Yeah, it's three parts. Yeah, we're still in the Summer Palace. Uh, apparently, when the studio put it on the CD for me, the way they divided it is not the way I would uh, not be critical for saying it's divided. Uh, this is the Summer Palace, the lake, you know, this is wintertime, there's a boat there. There are boats you can rent. And this is one of the big structures in the Summer Palace. It's really quite impressive. Here we are with a bunch of, uh, by this clothing, this is definitely 79, 1980. Uh, they didn't start changing until the late 80s. Some details, some of the structures there. Individualism was frowned upon you know, to be a part of the group, so you dressed the same way at that, at that time. This was more political than cultural still within the Summer Palace, and that's the city of Beijing in the background, almost tall buildings now. Now, this is um, by the Summer Palace. It's one of the Imperial Lions guarding uh, you know, the, the uh, entrance. This is a uh, moon bridge over uh, on the canal, or the uh, approach to Lake and the Summer Palace. Some of the carvings are quite beautiful. Now, the, uh, when, the, when the foreign powers had um, besieged Beijing in 1900, the Boxer Rebellion, the court said, well, we must prevent this. We're going to raise a lot of money to, to defend the realm. You know. And what did the Empress, the Dowager Empress, she spent most of this money building this marble boat. <laughs> so it's a monument to corruption, really. Yeah. In the wintertime, you can see by the snow. Here we have soldiers and their families visiting the Summer Palace and the Marble Boat. And the message was, this is what corruption, you know, it's a 
different message at that time. This is a, uh, a, a snack kiosk, you know, with beverages and food, and it's how people dressed at the time. Now, we are now in Hebei province, uh, just as Maryland and Virginia surround D.C. Hebei's province in northern China surrounds Beijing. And uh, this is about 200 miles north, south, south of Beijing. Provincial capital of Xichuan. Anyway, and this is an old um, pagoda temple, um, I would say, before the Ming Dynasty, so probably at least a thousand years old. And it's being restored. And here are some soldiers, or people dressed as soldiers, around there. And here are some people having their picture taken. You know, this, the, the day out, the day out visit. This is in Xichuan. It's like a um, curious look. <laughs> and this is within the same temple complex. Now, during the Cultural Revolution, all these places were shut. They were considered decadent of the, um, of the old, the old um, age era. But after Deng Xiaoping was over, he opened them up. They were over restored to the weapons of the public. This is in one of the one of the um, buildings of the temple. The large stone tor tortoise, very slow. He's not moving at all. And now, now this is where the, the, the order of the slides is changing a bit. We've left Xijiang. We left Hebei Province. <laughs> We're now in central China in Suzhou. Um, if you look. Beijing will be equivalent to Boston in terms of the, the latitudes of the country. Uh, Shanghai would be like in uh, North South Carolina. And then and here would be uh, in that same latitude. And then where we Guangzhou would be like Florida. You know, it's, it's much more southerly. But Suzhou is an ancient capital of China. It's a very historic city, very cultural. A lot of canals and a lot of traffic goes through these barges, you know, and there's a lot of many moon bridges over the canal. Here is a uh, temple at uh, midday, a young biker visiting. And the same temple, he's parked his bike, and you now he's. <coughs> this was 1983 or 84, I would say. Now, this is a temple. These are all Chinese. These are not tourists. The temple is open, so a lot of people are coming to burn incense sticks to honor their ancestors. This is a priest who works at the temple. Uh, and now it's time he would have been locked up and sent to a, sent to a farm to work. Maybe all these monasteries are closed. And here's a lady burning the temple. Grandmother and her daughter, her granddaughter, she's brother burning candles uh, and incense sticks. Now we're in the countryside. This is the city of Shaoxing, and uh, it's really quite uh, stunning. That's where Zhou Enlai, the former premier, was from. He was he was another great Chinese leader. He died in 1976. And here we have a bridge going over these canals. Here we have somebody. Not in, this, that's the same, the same bridge. Shoulder poles are very common. He's got water mountains on one, and somebody comes on the other. Here are people washing their clothes at the bottom of the, of the uh, bridge. And we're driving along the uh, river, the canal, I should say. There are some boats. A lot of a lot of boats are moved by very small boats. This is a, uh, through one of the canals. A boatman is navigating with Paul, and here it was, this is a, by a distillery. These are um, jugs, jugs, large jugs of uh, Chinese uh, whiskey. And this is another boat, this person's working on it. Color, as, as the original slide, the colors were sharper. 
That's the same boat man we just saw. Close. This is not. This is a, a small town along this uh, delta, you know. and every, everything is located along the water because it's, e it's faster and cheaper to move things by water than by road. And here's a lady in the lower left, about uh, seven o'clock, doing her laundry. <laughs> This is uh, in the same area. It's like a park. Here we have um, Moonbridge. This is, I would say, the commercial part, part of the, of the uh, canal. Here we have somebody moving a boat with, you know, all, 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 all by mu muscle, muscle power. Here we are, he's gonna pick up passengers. This was in 88, I think. Same area, just different. These scenes still exist. I'm skeptical. <laughs> now we're skipping a little bit. This is in uh, Zhejiang Province. I would call it the New Jersey of China. <laughs> very industrial, but also very nice. And this is the city of Hangzhou. Hangzhou was a former capital in ancient times. It's really the most cultured part of China. And there's a large lake, the West Lake, and there's some people going to the lake. It's really quite, uh, quite stunning. And here we have somebody got the moving goods by hand, you know, by pulling it under one of these uh, bridges and pedestrians. This is a, uh, a temple pavilion. City now. I apologize for the. <laughs> this is Xi'an. Xi'an was the ancient capital of China before Beijing. It's in northwest China. China this is where the Terracotta Army is. You know, mm -hmm. the, uh, but the city itself, it's a, it's a walled city, and uh, it's really the, the old. It's much older than Beijing. And here we have uh, before all the tourists started coming. <laughs> it's about 85, 1985. Um, so actually industrial buildings inside the city. And this wall, this wall is about 1,200, 1,300 years old. And they put some, you see at uh, 9 o'clock, some uh, arches, you know, put uh, traffic through. This is a close-up of the same scene. You know, get the, get these are the, the, gate, the gates, you know. But, uh, and then at that time, outside the wall, those walls, was just agricultural land. I went back 10 years later, and outside the wall, it was like center city Philadelphia, completely built up, you know? Yeah. And here's another view of the walls uh, separating you know, the, the city. Uh, from, I'm, I'm, we're walking along, along the wall. The wall, the circumference of the wall must be about 10 to 12 miles. Easily. And here everybody going on bikes today would be motor scooters or cars. This is the, the main gate, the main gate, gate house, what you call it? Gate. Mm -hmm. Steps going up. Here we are in Xi'an, some men uh, playing uh, cards, telling stories. It's summertime, so dressed uh, lightly. And I was, this is only a few miles outside of Xi'an, it's a, a pagoda, it's an ancient pagoda. And today I'm told it's just like apartment house, you know, the entire. But here you can see it in a less spoiled, uh, less spoiled way. 
and uh, it's a temple, so you have a priest. There are a lot of, around Siena, a lot of parks, there's some artificial lakes and so forth. Nice artificial lake with uh, this is the family. It was just a Sunday, if I recall. We were going out for the day, yeah. and at nine o'clock, you had a dragon's head there. This is the, uh, the terracotta warriors, you know, where they um, excavated this uh, tomb, hundreds and hundreds of, of stone or terracotta soldiers who are guarding the emperor, and they put this structure on top of it to otherwise, you know, it would be quite, uh, quite fragile. And there were very few tours at the time. Now I'm told it takes hours to get in, you know. You have to be early, like 30 years ago. <laughs> This is a group of Chinese tourists from the countryside that are getting ready to go into the, uh, into the tomb and they're you know, a little dressed and uh, as a group. Here we are. Oh, look at me. I look quite different. <laughs> Here is the. As this, you have individual soldiers in, in rows. So you have horses. This is at the slide. The, co the colors are much better as the slide. Um, I can show the slides next time. Yeah, here's a close-up a little better. And apparently, each soldier was modeled after a specific soldier in the Chinese army. So it's not uh, each one has distinct uh, features. How old are they supposed to be? I hazard a guess about 500 AD, 1500, 1600 years. I, I would est estimate. Here's like a detail. And they're still excavating, you know, there's still, still an ongoing excavation. So compared to this period, you would see a larger, more, more soldiers uncovered. Yeah, here's showing the excavation process, and they, they put a few in the uh, market in remarkably good, good condition. And then around the uh, this um, so this ex exhibition area, a lot of uh, vendors in their stalls. Here, where they're selling uh, snacks and bottled bottle of drinks. Selling replica, you know, small. <laughs> you know, it was all I mean, this is before the Western tourists started coming. This is all this is pre the pre tourist era, Western tourist era. Uh, he's selling sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are a big thing in China. He's selling hard boiled eggs as well. He's smoking. And he smoke, they also smoke. And I would say, don't you understand, or do you understand? Smoking is dangerous. It's only American cigarettes are dangerous. Chinese cigarettes are safe. Yeah. 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 Tobacco smoking is a huge tax re revenue for the government. Do they grow tobacco? Yet? Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. They're actually the biggest tobacco producer in the world. And here are replicas, cheap replicas of some of the enemy you know, specialists. These are not the authentic. This is. <laughs> They're quite cheap. It's difficult to bring home when they can't carry on. So do it. And here are animal skins. So uh, there's really an illicit tra traffic in uh, endangered species. These are all fur. These are not. These are real furs. Now we're leaving, we've left Sea and we've left that area. We're going into the center of Shanxi province called the Chinmen Mountains. 
and this is literally in the middle of nowhere. It's a military area, but they grow medicinal plants that are used to produce anti-cancer drugs, Taxol. And we're going through the countryside to get to this uh, factory the Chinese army actually runs. So, but this is a typical scene in northern, uh, northwestern China, different to southern China. Well, the, the climate is different. You know, the uh, building materials are different. They really have corn. They don't grow corn in the south. Corn is a major crop. And corn was introduced to China by the Spanish from the Philippines. The Manila Galleon took corn from Mexico to the Philippines in the 1500s, and then they sent it to China where they got silk, they um, exchanged for porcelain, silk, and so forth. This is the same farm, I would comment. working in the field, and he's got two buffalo working in the field, you see, on about 10 o'clock, and they have muzzled with the uh, muzzle. And here's another shot of the same. So this is a restricted area. You will not see foreigners in here, period, but we had a project in the factory, so we could go. And why is that restricted otherwise? Uh, well, one reason is there's a big heavy water, nuclear heavy water plant, which is, you know, has military use as well as civilian use and other things. <laughs> can't, you can't go there today, I don't know. It's impossible. Now here, this is a road, not much traffic, and peasants are putting yeah. There to be threshed by all the cars or buses driving by. You know. And they actually asked our car, could you back up and do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the same farm. And this is a farm on the way. Uh, chili peppers, they're harvesting chili peppers. Very colorful, very hot. And we pass by, there's a small town. This is a Chimney Mountains, um, making funerary stones. Now, during the Cultural Revolution, that was all banned, you know. You, they were ripping up cemeteries. Now it's back, you know. And here we have in this village, well, a small town, the men playing uh, some game. off the tourist track, for sure. And this is a funerary arrangement. Uh, this is often presented at Chinese funerals. This is really the countryside. And here we have a young man, the vegetable seller. traditional Chinese herbs and uh, medicinal plants. Various, uh, not FDA approved. Uh, <laughs> well. and this is a uh, temple, an old temple in this, uh, this town. And here they're restoring some uh, figures as a horse. This was an important provincial town, I believe, a thousand years ago. And now it's a military district. People in, yeah, here, actually somebody's working on the right trying to ride it. <laughs> yeah, now we're going into the uh, highlands of this area where these plants are grown. from the bark of a tree, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb and Pioneer Taxol from a yew tree. But when they take the bark, to kill the tree, so they had to stop it. But here they found a different plant producing the same product. It was a very interesting project. 
And here we have terrace, terrace, um, field terraces, you know. This is the morning, morning, morning clouds breaking. Looks like end of part two. Uh, arch which goes right into the factory where we're going to make the tax a pharmaceutical factory. A political slogan on top. Uh, there's a temple here also. The factory is like right next door. Corn drying on the left. A very picturesque area. <laughs> this is some uh, reaction vessels, There's some lab, lab te technicians. It's not very sophisticated, but it gets the job done. This is a uh, laboratory assistant uh, collecting uh, ex extracts from the plants. It's an army run. So they had a um, morning formation. We're all here <laughs> and then not get to work. So they're in our army dress. Are they all males? Yeah. At that time. Those ones in uniform, but there's the women who work, work, work in the factory, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I am sure we've come to another problem. This is an Andre province. This would be equivalent to uh, Ohio. <laughs> so along the Yangtze River, um, I do a lot of work there. Uh, it's a large coal mining region, so a lot of industry is there because they have the coal. China is the biggest coal producer in the world, but compared to American coal, it's very dirty, it's very high sulfur, it's very high ash content, so it just smokes everything. So, um, and here there's a, um, the city of Hefei, the capital of the province, the lake, artificial lake in Hefei. Moon bridge, and you got some people climbing on top. This is this, this lake in FA. I mean, this park, the little park. Uh, here we are on the streets. This is the laundromat. Uh, bicycle park. gentlemen selling candied apples you know, on top. A lot of apples are produced in this area. It's a more climate similar to the United States or our part of the United States. 
And here is a locksmith. The contrast a little better you can see him right there. He's making some locks for a uh, policeman. And here we have blacksmiths that work on the street. A lot of craftsmen work on the street, you know, your blacksmiths, your cobblers, your mother raining that day. And here they have a, um, he's hammering a, uh, a, hot, a hot rod. A little closer, you can see. Glowing here. The child of the families in the background. Center here, she has the uh, hearth, you know, we're here, we're getting the temperature up. Uh, same scene, here she's making the hot coals. So we got a blacksmith's press. Everybody smokes. Everybody smokes. And here we have a shoemaker in the street, I mean, in the working on the street in the town. He's making shoes. There's a sewing machine for different parts of the shoes. This is a park in Hefe, and they're a traditional lion dance. They had a uh, celebration that day. And the performers got dressed in these little lion costumes. All these places are out, not in the tourist district. You don't know, see any foreigners there at all. Here we have two performing lions, and not real lions, of course. But Lions. Here they are taking a break. And another performance of the same part. And these are uh, minority, minority, Chinese minority from Yunnan province in the southwest. You'll see they look similar to people and dress similar to people you see in Laos and Southeast Asia, you know, northern Vietnam. Very elaborate head headdresses. Here we are close. Uh, this was a um, big holiday, a big political holiday. National Teachers Day. This was, I think, 1988, 89. A big parade of all the students from the schools in this small city with their teachers. Got the message out. They're not striking for higher pay. They're just <laughs> the teachers of the party. All with red flag shows with the party. And the youth group, I mean, those are our senior students in the previous slide. group of girl students with their teacher, Pong, Pong, Pong. And doing a performance, you know, um, waving like you see at halftime in a football game. Mm -hmm. and here, interesting contrast, an old lady, and uh, one of all the students are passing by with a, a, a political battle. We're still in Anhui province. This is not the order I wanted to show them, but this is another te very old temple. And this is one of the priests who was um, ritual, the uh, Bo uh, Buddhist temple. And you got the pagoda up there. And I did go to the top of the pagoda to take pictures of the surrounding town. And here we have uh, another priest to the left. the tourist room. Here they are praying. Here. Now, before 19, before 77, you could not see this at all. This club would have been closed. It's considered degenerate by a chairman now. You know, he died just in time. Now, what religion are we talking about? Buddhist. They're all Buddhist. Buddhist. Yeah. In the Northwest, where you'll see some slides that are tomatoes to be Muslims in the Northwest. Far northwest Xinjiang. A lot of Christians in China, many, many, millions of Christians that didn't wear it without the missionaries, very few missionaries. Protestant, the Catholic Church is not welcome in China. It was a foreign influence, but Protestant uh, denominations. 
And here we are in Monterey Province. This is the, one of the tributaries of the United Sea. And from these bar working barges, they're um, delivering or collecting uh, sand and dirt for a construction project. And you see it's all done by shoulder poles, you know. Up on the back. And here in the small town, uh, here, everything is moved by bicycles or cars, you know. It was, uh, at that time, very little mechanization. Interesting, interesting people. They're all dressed the same way, you know, these military like. This is a for some 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 food some some uh, some 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 snack you know thermos bottles for hot water and tea. She's at the construction site. A lot of construction workers are women. Mm -hmm. She's carrying something you know, shoulder bulbs to, to move to move dirt or sand. I would think. And, uh, somebody a little boy fooling around. Uh, this is typical thing how things are moved in the countryside. This is an Anway province, which is also the rice growing area. The rice paddy, as is working there. Without the buffalo, I can see a buffalo there. I don't say that they aren't there, but not that day. This is a full of production team, trying to rice all done by hand. And this is the, actually the rice is being, in this scene, the rice is being harvested in these uh, baskets. Stop by to say hello to somebody. Yeah, he's got his he's, he's buffalo and he's got a little boy on the. Um, this is another farmhouse. Just stop by and, uh, you know, animals all over the place. Here there's a cart there, difficult to help me angle, and she's pulling a ton of material in that cart. That's why everybody is so thin, they work hard. <laughs> Here is a country road woman with her shoulder poles, and here are the guys leading his uh, buffalo road marker. Phoenix will play in Chinese. <laughs> it's a close up of the same lady. And our friend with this water buffalo. the road. Now this is in wintertime, that was summertime before, in another part of the Anway province. This young lady in this farming community is going with buckets to collect water from the communal well. And here she is, the well is here. She's going to take the water, I mean, imagine like 50 gallons of water is very heavy. <laughs> uh, and the vegetable, winter vegetables. It's car when it's cold outside. And it's on the Yangtze, so no central heating, it's, you know, so it's cold. This, now we're in Xinjiang. This is the far northwest of China, borders on Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan. This is the Muslim region of China. The people ethnically are not Chinese, they're Caucasian. They uh, were conquered by uh, Muslim conquerors a thousand years ago. But the Chinese dominate, the ethnic Chinese, Han Chinese dominate the area. It's a sensitive border area, very rich in oil and minerals. And everything you see here, except the mosque, in the next few slides, what I understand has been raised recently for more control. Not the mosque. This is a worshiper coming out of the mosque. These are Uyghurs. The Hungarian people came from. In fact, in Hungary, no, the St. John Tourist Bureau advertised in Budapest, come back to your roots, take a tour of St. John. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a, yeah, this market, this bizarre area was totally raised last year. It's for social control. And, uh, you know, this woman 
looks like she could be in uh, South Philadelphia, you know. But the men, not Chinese. But the men look as though they are Chinese. You're saying they're no, Caucasian. No, no, no. I'll show you some more pictures. All right, the, there are Chinese li 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 living there, but the, the indigenous people are not et et ethnically Chinese. This is a, a stall in the, in the market. It's been raised when I told. These are policemen having a uh, shish kebab. Hot steaks in China. <laughs> <laughs> this is Main Street, and Ormuchi is the capital of Xinjiang province. A, you see, you see, except for the bus, I saw no cars there at all. This is 1986. Uh, so here, a donkey drawn cart, bicycle, trying to get around. Feature, well, th this is the color contrast is not as good as I would like it, but these features is someone you would see from the Middle East, you know. So these are, you know. Here we are, uh, traffic on the main street at <laughs> midday, driving sheep to the market. Uh, this is the terminus, the western terminus of the Great Wall. The Great Wall stretches from the ocean through um, Inner Mongolia, part of Xinjiang, and in this part it was all like mud, you know, mud, mud brick, and not much is left. But the rest of it is quite impressive. Now this is where most tourists would see. This part has been re re restored. You can actually walk along here, you know. Summertime. Some features. There's some people there. Mm -hmm. out, uh, here we have some people walking on the wall. Because it was it was the defensive project to keep out uh, raiding uh, barbarians, you know, and the wall was breached a number of times. Forest now, of course. This part of the wall, I believe, was done during the Ming dynasties, 1400, 1350 to 1550. A major expansion of the wall and making it a really solid structure. Here we have a janitor sweeping up. Everybody does this part. That's a lot, that's a lot, of, a lot of dust and trash to pick up along the wall. And now, I went there a number of times. This is winter time. It's a different part of the Great Wall. Here we have Chinese tourists that are bundled up. You can see the wall to your left, about upper left. You know, here's an example. And it, the wall follows the contours of the mountains, you know, so it, um, they didn't level any ground to make it straight. And they say it's like a dragon uh, making its way across the mountains, you know. Dragon the watchtowers are called Drag Dragon's Teeth. Here, here we are on, on the wall itself. No advertising, I didn't see any advertising on the wall. <laughs> Mint condition. Close up. You know, there's a lot of controls in the mountains and here you see different levels, but these are the guard towers. And you actually could ride a horse along the wall, you, know, you can get troops along the wall. Mm -hmm. That was my best move. <laughs> I'm now a pharmacist. <laughs> yes? Any, any questions at all? You, you were over there for a long time, uh, but you didn't, didn't speak the language or read it. Was Did that make it very difficult? Well, you? what I found was, I, I mean, I can speak other languages. I'm fluent in Spanish, for example. So I, I can speak other languages. But Chinese, it's a tonal language. 
the tone is not right, it's wrong. And I just could never, my hearing maybe is not as good as it was. When I was younger, my father was a pressman at the Inquirer newspaper. I worked there for weekends and summers for five or six years. That noise really boosts my hearing, so I just cannot hear those tones. But I also found that if you did speak Chinese, at a business, we're looking at business meetings or technical sessions, they will get you off signal. Let's talk about some trivial matter, some, some funny joke, some. Now there's no time left. I mean, the whole meeting's been consumed, so please sign this. So I had my own staff of you know, Chinese, and they, they would give me an honest translation. And then if something was disagreeable, I would say, well, my interpreter made a mistake. I didn't make a mistake, you know? A lot, a lot, a lot of uh, Kabuki theater. But I found to get the work done, it was better going through an interpreter. Someone who worked for me, not, not, not for the government, you know? And um, it worked for me. It worked successfully for a large number of years. Yes? Why no Catholics? Why no Catholics? The Vatican has no, as I understand it, no relations with the, uh, the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the Civil War when the Communists won in 1949. The um, Protestant churches were in China were passive, you know, uh, in the years, where the Catholic um, parish parishes, they raised their own armies to fight the Communists. Mm -hmm. So they did not stay neutral. Mm -hmm. And also, they don't, from what, I mean, I don't think anything has changed at all. They don't want a foreign controlled entity. The Chinese churches are controlled by the government. When I say controlled, I mean they're not under foreign ownership or influence. But the population, Chinese, Christian population in China is enormous. Really, really, really big, which is very interesting. Do you think yes. the, uh, the Pope is a symbol to rival the Chinese uh, Premier? Uh, I'll put it this way, um, now with the present premier of China, Xi Jinping, he's going back to a less liberal period, you know, a less open period. Party is supreme, emperor is supreme, do not tolerate dissent, absolutely not. <laughs> and uh, they don't want, um, they never did. Um, Sources of uh, uh, ideologies or social groups that could oppose the government, you know. Competition. Yeah, basically uh, that's it. I mean, I think in general they've done a very good job in China. You don't have the poverty you had before, tremendous industry. I mean, they did many good things, but not everything is so good. They have four major problems they're not going to solve, in my opinion. Well, that's not my opinion, it's facts. Water shortage. Yes, South China has a lot of water. North China does not. And uh, lakes that I saw in 1979 in North China, by 1985, were bone dry because they're pumping the water for urbanization and industry. The water tables only so only have so much. The biggest engineering project in the world now is in China. They're trying to divert the Yangtze River to the Yellow River, you know, big canals that will feed. This is tens of billions of dollars. It will work, I don't know. But water is short in China. And in the Northwest, like they've been, you know, it just is not available. And that will put a cap on their industrialization, urbanization, no question. The second biggest problem is gender imbalance. In 1978, they said only one child. We had too many people. Well, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. And so, Everybody wants a boy in China. This is more traditional society. So after the woman is pregnant, what, three or four months, they do a, um, whatever. And as a girl, a lot of girls were fetuses were aborted, you know. So now, this is like 30 years later or so, you have many, many of that generation more men than women, which is very, very social tension. Uh, and now you can have two children. You know, but so this is gonna be a very, very big problem. Third biggest problem in China, pollution. Now, everything looked nice there, but I have other pictures I didn't show, like in the middle of Xi'an, which is a major industrial, a major tourist center. You say, you might say, did you take that at 10 o'clock at night? No, 10 o'clock in the morning. Incredible amount of pollution. This is a disaster. And um, 
Yeah, they have regulations, but they're not enforced, you know. Fourth biggest problem, debt. If you think our government debt is a serious problem, it's much, much, much worse in China. If they need great volume of exports to service a very large deficit. And it's like when you don't make your payments on your credit card, you're over, suddenly all the, all the cards uh, come down. When I first went there, they were major oil exporters. They have a lot of oil, but now their industry is so, so big now, they, they are ne they're now the biggest oil importers from the Middle East, from Iran, from uh, Saudi Arabia. So they need um, these exports to pay, to pay for all these, um, they cannot feed themselves. They are the biggest importer of grain, grains and so forth, and they have this disease of the pork, so. So these, these are funda fu fundamental problems. And the fifth one is corruption. Believe me, when I first went there, if you were accused of corruption, if you were, I mean, everybody was in officially, everywhere, from, there was no private industry then, you were in jail. If you were convicted of corruption, you were shot. Yeah. And everybody knew it. Now everybody steals in government. I mean, really, yeah. My son lives in Toronto. He works as an engineer. His landlord is from China, and they had bought three, housing in Toronto is incredibly expensive. They bought three houses which they divided into apartments for cash. Now how did that cash get out of China, you know? <laughs> Donald Trump is a billionaire, but he earned it in real estate before he became president. Xi Jinping is a billionaire, and that was a government, he's skimmed off the government, you know. So the corruption is, I mean, all this money is leaving China to buy real estate all around the world. Because he's a bank account, but you can't move a house back, you know. <laughs> so this is really a, a, a serious problem. Will there be conflict? I don't think so. They're much more realistic than the Soviet Union. And all the Chinese students who study in America, study in Europe, study in Australia, they come back with different ideas too, you know. It, de it definitely ch changes the flavor of the soup. Opportunities, and there's also uh, areas for disagreement, you know, and competition. But they've accomplished a great deal, there's no, there's no question of that. No question. Elson, I hate to stop, but well, the library is closing. <laughs> <laughs>